So, Andrew, tell me about your new website, Big Hollywood. Well, I'll tell you anything you want to know about it, Luke Ford. <laughs> tell me uh, wh why. why. Why do this website? Uh, there are two primary reasons. Uh, that, is that correct? Are you allowed to say two primary? <laughs> uh, uh, the number one reason is that the conservative movement has completely detached itself from the concept of popular culture and thinks that it can survive in the 21st century uh, on politics and legislation alone and political rhetoric and, and great writing reflecting conservative principles, and that's not going to happen. What, is, what needs to happen is that the conservative movement, based in Washington, D.C., for the most part, uh, and with ancillary entities around the country, New York City, Dallas, Virginia, these people have ignored anything west of the Mississippi for a generation, and they're suffering the consequences, and the election of Barack Obama is evidence of that. They, the conservative movement uh, proper, did not embrace Ronald Reagan initially, but it eventually came to accept him as the standard bearer of conservatism. He was successful less because he carried conservative principles, but because he came from Hollywood and he understood the importance of communication and pop culture. It's, it took them a long time to realize that that magic um, was a good way to sell conservatism, that bright-eyed optimism. And so the conservative movement needs to go focus on Hollywood in countless ways. It needs to encourage its young to go out to Hollywood to become screenwriters, actors, producers, below-the-line workers. It also needs to focus on Hollywood proper, film reviews, and become engaged in, in, in the debate out there. It's interesting that, that we have so many people in the conservative movement who write about legislation and political uh, controversies every single day. A matter of fact, there seems to be about 50 people writing on, on the same subject all day long, but very few people focus on pop culture, and pop culture is the DNA of our of our of of who we are, and we export that uh, through the satellite dishes and in our DVDs and on the television screen and in films across the world. And if we don't alter that DNA, if we don't try to inject in it our best qualities and not our worst qualities, uh, our 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 fate is in the hands of people who don't agree with us, and and that faith is in people in Hollywood that we disagree with right now. So we have to take them on using their skills. And that's the primary objective. I'd say the secondary objective of the site is to create cover for those who exist in Hollywood right now who actually are conservative or libertarian or consider themselves to be Lieberman Democrats or JFK liberals, people who don't necessarily relate to the current uh, boutique leftism that seems to be intent on uh, squelching any type of di dissent, especially dissent that is right of center. And I believe that the site will provide cover for those people when you uh, inject the establishment conservative movement, and I've got top congressmen, uh, I've got a few senators in the pike uh, that are interested in writing for the site. When you have people from the Weekly Standard, National Review, Commentary, even New Republic and Reason who want to, to discuss pop cultural issues here and, and, and the intersection of pop culture and politics, uh, I, I think that just with a quick phone call, to get all these people to, to line up uh, shows that, that, that these people know that there's a problem, and to get them all in one place focusing in on pop culture and the perils of the Hollywood conservative or the Hollywood non-leftist, you will be providing protection from the bullies that exist out here 
who are never or rarely punished for their bad behavior. So that's the primary one, is to give, is to, to create cover for these people, and hopefully, slowly but surely, they'll not just be able to come out of the closet and, and represent their political point of view as freely as Sean Penn feels that he can. Uh, they'll also be able to represent their point of view in the product that they create. The screen, uh, the, the movies will begin to reflect that in this country there are two prevailing parties. I mean, you know, there are two, there are two parties and there are two basic philosophies and there, there needs to be at least some representation in the arts from the other. Is this the, the big project that your soul has been yearning for? You know, that's that's a good question because I just stated that earlier in the day to somebody. This is I'm passionate for this. I the last time you interviewed me was when the book Big Hollywood, uh, Big Hollywood, when the book Hollywood Interrupted came out, and I wrote it with Mark Ebner back in 2004. And all that was was an emotional reaction to Hollywood and their lack of participation in, in anything akin to a war effort. This was before the Iraq war started, so everybody can talk about Bush being a hated person and that we had the country and we had the world with us after 9-11. That wasn't the case. The anger that I was that was burning in me was born before the Iraq war when I saw that the very people who were benefiting the most from this country uh, refused to take... Uh, even a neutral stand uh, in, in defending this country. These people took as abhorrent a position as I could have possibly imagined. And I think history will show that many of the celebrities were at the forefront of building uh, a, 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 an anti-war movement uh, and, and, a very anti- and, creating and fomenting anti-Americanism abroad. So I held them in contempt then, in the last four years, I've come to realize, because I've gone on television and radio and uh, all over the place representing an, a, a fairly anti-Hollywood left point of view, I've had countless people come up to me and met them through countless circumstances who whisper to me, email me, uh, convene with me at, at bars or restaurants around Los Angeles, and familiar faces familiar names, tell me I don't agree, but I don't have the cover. I, I, need, I need cover in order for me to represent myself, or I need to make enough money to get my kids through college right now in order for me to feel comfortable to speak out against a Sean Penn. And, and how crazy is it that Sean Penn feels so comfortable to go to Cuba, to go to Venezuela and Iraq before that, as if there's not a tyrant he can't you know, have an affinity for, and he knows that when he comes back from those trips that the powers that be in Hollywood are not going to have the slightest problem with that, and they're going to put him in the next made-for Oscar movie uh, and praise him as, as a genius of our time when a, when a Hollywood uh, conservative who supports the, the president of the United States and at a time of war is fearful that he won't have a job on Monday if he comes home because... Uh, the establishment media will expose him, mock him, turn the person into a... If the person was an A-list star, they'll become a C-list star in a nanosecond. And that's just how it's done. I mean, the Frank Riches of the world are just so brilliant at a turn of phrase. He did it with Ron Silver, who was his favorite actor, and he wanted him to help a Broadway... uh, uh, renewal campaign in the 1990s when he was a good liberal, and then it, later in a column when he, after he addressed uh, the the Republican National Convention in 2004, he described him as a D-list actor. It's that simple turn of phrase in in the New York Times or in any other liberal publication that you can take a person for whom their reputation is everything and you can diminish it overnight and they're no longer hireable and the same type of uh the same type of effect that the the, the gay act gay leftist activists did with prop 20 prop 8 uh 